Welcome to Live Doc, your online Doc Yomi Shear. Shalom, welcome back to today's Daf Yomi, which is Yuma Yutes. We begin right on top. It says the Gemara Tana, we learned in a Bryce. This is referring back to the Mishnah, which told us that the Kain Gadol was transferred over to the Zikne Kihuna, the elders of the Kehanim, who would bring him up to the Aliyah Space of Tinos. This was the Kteris shop. What was the purpose? Says the Gemara Tana, we learned in a Bryce. Lila to teach him, to train him in, and how to scoop the Kteris, which was a, um, a great skill that he had to master before Yom Kippur. Amar of Papa, Shtei Lishkais, Hoylo the Kain Gadol. Kain Gadol actually used two rooms during these seven days prior to Yom Kippur. Achas, Lishkas Parhedrin, that was a Lishka in which he slept. Vachas, Lishkas Besaftinos. The other one was a Teres shop, where he would go train on a daily basis, as we just mentioned. Achas Besafin, Vachas Bedar. One was situated on the Tzafain side of the Azara, the other one on the Durham side. Suppose you're walking into the base of Midrash from Mizrach, going from east to west. Your right would be Tzafain, your left would be Durham. Can God that we know had two rooms, one on Tzafain, one on Durham. We're not exactly sure which room was situated where. But we know he had two rooms, one situated on either side of the Azara. One Tzafoin, which is the right, one on Durham, left. Achas but Tzafoin, where do we find any mention of his room on the Tzafoin side of the Azara? It's not. Vav, Lishkais, Hayub Azara. There were six rooms in the Azara. Gimel but Tzafoin, three on the right. The Gimel but Durham, three on the left. Sheb let's go through the three which were Bedarim. Lishkas HaMelech, that's one. Lishkas HaParva, that's two. Lishkas HaMadichin, number three. What did these rooms uh, serve uh, for? What was their function? Lishkas HaMelach Shesham Hoyu Nois Nemelch Karban. The Lishkas HaMelach was used as a storage room for salt used for the Karbanis. Lishkas HaPar What was the function of that room? Shesham Hoyu Molchan Aris Kachim In that room they would tan, they would salt the hides of the Karbanis. Ve'al Gaga And on the rooftop of Lishkas HaParva there was a, a mikvah which the Kohen Gadol used on Yom Kippur. He had to be table in the Beis HaMikdash proper in the Makam Kaddish. And that's where he went, to the rooftop of Beis HaParva. There's a medrash that it was called Beis HaParva after a guy, a guy, who, a guy whose name was, was Parva, who so desired to see the avoida of the Kohen Gadol Yom Kippur. So he tunneled, he actually tunneled his way into the Beis HaMikdash on Yom Kippur. And they found him and they killed him. So they, uh, they named the Lishka, which was situated at that, at that location, they named it after the guy who was, uh, so to speak, Moise Nefesh, to see the Avoida. So that was Lishka Zaparva, upon which, uh, on the rooftop of which there was a, a Lishka, a base at for the Kain God. And thirdly, we have Lishka Samadichin, Shamha Yumadichin, Kirve Kachim. In that room, they would rinse out the innards of the Karbonus. Now Tysus asks, don't we really have a place for that? We have the tables in the Azora, upon which they would rinse the Karbonus. He says, in the Azora they would rinse the meat, the basar, but the innards, which weren't pleasantly looking, pleasant looking, they were taken to the Lishka Samadichin and rinsed them there. Umi Sham, from that Lishka Samadichin, Mesiba Oila, it was a spiral staircase rising, Legag Besa Parva, up to the Rooftop of Beis Parva, where, where the mikvah was, so this would allow access for the Kain Gadol to his uh, to his mikvah. So we discuss the three rooms on which side, on the Durham side. So if you're facing the Azara, east to west, this will be on the left side. We have Lishkas Hamelach for salt, Lishkas Parva for salting the skins of the Karbanis, and Lishkas Hamadichan for rinsing off the Karbanis. From which you had access to the rooftop of Esav Parva, where the Kengadol's mikveh was located. Gimel Shabbat Safin, the three Lishkas on the right side of the Azara, were as follows. Lishkas Ha'etz, Lishkas Ha'goyla, Lishkas Ha'gosas. Explains the Mishnah. Lishkas Ha'etz, what uh, purpose did this room serve? Omar, Blazman Yaakov, Shachachli. I forgot. Ma'isam Shameshes, 
what um, what purpose it served. Avashol Oymer, he says, I'll fill you in. Lishkas Kohen Godel This room, the Lishkas Eitz, was actually the room used by the Kohen Godel. I saw a nice chat. Why was it called Lishkas Eitz? This was in contrast to the other room, Lishkas Evan, described in the face of an Aleph, used by the Kohen prior to the Shreifas Paraduma, because the utensils in that room were made of stoneware so that they resist Tuma, because we were trying to safeguard him from uh, becoming Tummy. Whereas the Kohen Gadol, we learned earlier, was Prishasa Lektusha. The primary objective was to um, encourage the right type of uh, mindset, the right type of frame of mind in preparation for the Avoidah and Kippur. And we weren't really so concerned about Tuma, which is in Shriach. In that room we can use proper, commonly used uh, Kalim, which were uh, made of eights. So that was Lishkas eights. Achoyrei Shtein. And it was right behind the other two Lishkas. Which other two? The Lishkas HaGoyla and Lishkas HaGazes. So it was like a, a triangle. You had Lishkas HaGoyla, Gazes, and right behind Lishkas HaEitz, where the Kohen Gadol lived. V'gag Shloshton Shavet. And the um, the rooftop of all three Lishkas, Eitz, Goyla, Goyla and Gazes, were all... Equally leveled. It was one rooftop for all three. So again, we had three Lishkais on the Tzafen side, which is on the right side of the Azara. Lishkas HaEitz, which was frequented by the Kohen Gadol. Lishkas HaGoyla. And Lishkas HaGazes. We just explained Lishkas HaEitz. Now let's proceed to the other ones. Lishkas HaGoyla, what was that? Shom HaYoboyr HaGoyla. In that room there was this uh, water pit. Which supplied uh, the the uh, in-house was the in-house water supply. Boy Hagoyla was called Boy Hagoyla because it had a galgal. A galgal no longer had this wheel, this uh, pulley system over it, which they would use to uh, lower the the kier, which contained water, lower it into the pit so that it connects with the underground water. In which case it won't become possible, you know, if it's out of the ground. So it had this galgal arrangement above it. Umishama speak in my from this bird, they would supply all the Azara's water needs. And finally, we have Lishkas HaGazes. It was this famous room. Lishkas HaGazes. Why was it called Gazes? It was uh, built with uh, chipped uh, stone. Sham Sanhedrin Chol Yisrael Yeshebis. In which, in the room, the Sanhedrin of Yisrael, the Supreme Court, the Bezden Shal Shivim Be'echad would sit there. V'dona Asake Hanam. And they would determine the, the status, the eligibility of the Kehanim. So no coin walks into Azara. He wants to do the Avoida. Let's sit down and figure it out. Who's your father? Who's your grandfather? They investigate his lineage to see if his Zichus conformed. And he was Kasha for Avoida. Umisha by Psal. Your unfortunate coin who turned out to be ineligible. He would wear and wrap himself with black as a sign of Avelis. And he would leave the area. A coin was found to be eligible. He would uh, dress and wrap himself with white as a sign of celebration and simcha. The Gemara in Shabbos actually says that a chasam would wear white uh, in celebration. Uh, today we're, we're black. But then they would wear white as a sign of simcha. Some simply learned that he just put on his big day kahuna, which were white. In any case, if a nichas or meshamish, mechavakahanim, and he would enter the Besamidosh and serve with his fellow kahanim. So we just covered the three Lishkais that were Bitsafin on the right side of the Azara. We have Lishkas HaGoyla for the water, Lishkas HaGoyla for the Sanhedrin, and Lishkas HaEitz, which served the Kohen God. Achas Badorin. Where do we find that Kohen God had a room? On Durin as well. Our Papa made a statement. Kohen God had two rooms, which he used. One Bitsafin, one Badorin. We just addressed the one that was Bitsafin, Lishkas HaEitz. Which was right near Lishkas Hagoyla, Lishkas Hagazes, which were situated on the Tzafin side, on the right side of the desert. Achas Bedorim, where do we find that he had another room? On the left side, on Dorim of the Azar. This now. Shiva Sha'arim Hayub Azar. The previous mission discussed the six rooms. Now we're going to discuss a different list. The seven entry points of the Azar. Gimel Bet Tzafin, three on the right. Gimel Bet Dorim, three on the left. Vechad Mizrach, one. To the east. Shebedar. Let's go and describe the ones 
Now on the left, Bedor, let's start from Marv up on top. Shara de Leku. Rashi says, Leodati, La I don't know why it was called Shara de Leku. Tesis Shanum gives up Shat. Yesh Lafarish, Shadurach Shum, Huyumavin, Yesh Lamarachat. Through this gate, they would supply the, the, the fire, or some say the fire wood, for the Marachat, for the Mizbeah. So Dleka, Delek denotes firewood, or fire. So that was the first Shar. Sheniloi, let's go down the line. The second one was Shar HaKarban, or as the Bach switches it to Shar HaBachoyres, because this was actually Bedarim. And the Bachar, which was the Kachim Kalim, so despite the fact that it was given to the Kayin as a Matana, perhaps you would think it's a Kachim Kachim, no, it's a Kachim Kalim, in which case you would do the Shechita, you would tend to it on the Dharam side of the Azara, Kachim Kachim with Amr B'Tzafim, the Kachim Kalim Bedarim. That's why they would call this Shar, Shar Bacharis, to um, highlight the point that a Bachar is not a Kachim Kachim, it's brought through this gate, and is tended to on that side, the left side, the Azara, like Kachim Kalim. Shlishiloi, the third gate on the line was Shara Mayim, Rashi explains, through which they would bring the water for Nisach HaMayim on Sukkot. So we covered all three Sharem Bedarim, Shara Dleka, Shara B'chiriz, and Shara Mayim. Sheva Mizrach, on the eastern side, we have Shara Niknar, the famous Shara, which was donated by Niknar, who experienced a miracle when he brought the doors from Mitzrayim, and they had to throw it into the sea and it swam along. That was Shara Niknar. Ushtei Lishkois Hayusham. There were two rooms there, Achas b'minoi, Achas b'smoyloi, one on the right of Shar Niknar and one on the left. Achas was called Lishkas Pinchas Hamalabish, was used by Pinchas, the, the dresser, the outfitter, for the, uh, the clothes of the Kehanim. Vachas Lishkas Oisach Havitan, the other one was called Lishkas Oisach Havitan, in which the Chavite, um, uh, the Minchas Chavitan preparers would engage in their preparation. Now there's a, a Shaila here, once we have two additional Lishkais, why would they not mention the previous Mishnah, which gave us a total of six, and we didn't mention these two, so the Rambam actually mentions eight in total, but Adam and Farshim explained, because these rooms were not actually in the Azara, they were built into the thickness of the wall of the Azara, alongside Shar Niknar, so they don't belong in the list previously mentioned, describing the Lishkais in the Azara proper itself. In any case, we went through the three Sha'arim and Dorim, the one of Mizrach, and let's proceed to Tzafen, to the right side of the Azar. Let's start from the top, from Marav, Shar Nitzitz. What was that? That was a Binyan Achsad <coughs> It was a column structure. Achsad usually means a, an open structure with no walls. But it had a roof. Ali ibn al had a second level on it. Visham Kayhanim Shaymin Milamalo Levim Milamata. This was used for lookouts, for Shmira, of course, not to protect from thieves. But as a uh, shmira for covet, we learn from Sukkim that the Mesemidosh had an honor guard. Their covet, the Kayanim would stay on top and look out from there. The Leviim would look out from the bottom, and it was called Shar Nitzitz. The Pasuk in the Shir Shirim says, Meitzitz Menachrakim, peering out, peeking out, looking out. And this was used as a lookout post, Shar Nitzitz. And right inside was the Chel, or as the Bach says, Upesach. There was a Pesach going from the uh, top floor of this uh, structure down to the Chel, which was right outside the Azara. The point is that there's no access into the Azara, rather to the outside. Well, if it's a lookout, you should have access to the area that you're looking out. Sheniloi, the next uh, Shar on the list, meaning going down from Marav to Mizrach, we proceed to Shar HaKorban, through which they would bring the Karbanis, Kachi Kachim, which needed to be tended to with Safain, and we're on the right side now, we're with Safain. So this was the appropriate use for that Shah. Shlishiloi, the third one on the list was Shah Besamaik, the entry point to Besamaik, this large room which featured a room, uh, four rooms within it, one on each corner. So the third Shah uh, was uh, to gain entry into that Besamaik. So we have a comprehensive list of all the Sharm, seven in total. Now, how does that pertain to us? Let's proceed. V'tani v'lintan abrais. Chamesh t'vilais v'asara kedushin on Yom Kippur can gadol would experience five t'vilais on a mikvah and ten times rinsing his hand and feet kedush yadayim raglayim. Toi v'kain gadol u mekadish bayayim. So he had a list of five t'vilais and ten kedushin. V'chulan bakkadish all were meant to take place in the Azorah proper. Al Gagbeisa Parva, on the rooftop of Beisa Parva described earlier. 
Why did they have to take place there? Rashi says, we're going to throw a Pasuk. says, This rinsing, this tefillah had to take place in the Makam Kaddish. Does that apply to everything except for the first one? Before you enter the Azar, you have to first be Teuvah. And that tefillah, of course, has to take place outside the Azar before entry. Chutz Mizu, except for the first one. Shaisa Bechayil, which happened outside the Azara, Al Gabe Sharamayim. On top of which gateway? Sharamayim. Which was described as being where? Bedarim. We just had a Mishnah. It was on the left side of the Azara. So Sharamayim was there. And on top, they built a mikvah. Rashi says somehow they got a stream flowing into the air. And it was a mikvah for a pre-entry. Uh, it was a pre-entry mikvah to allow entry to the Azar. Now this is crucial. This mikvah, which was on Sharaim, was right alongside the King Godel's room. Oh, now we found the other room. We have the room on Darim. So we previously described Lishkas at Eitz as serving the King Godel. Lishka says was bit suffering. Now we have another Lishka used by the Kain Gadol, Bidar. So one on the right of the Azara, one on the left. And this fits with Rapapa. He had two Lishkas. One was used for lodging, Parhedrin, and one for training, based on Tinas. Only thing is, Veloyedana, we have no clue which one was where. Ili Lishkas Parhedrin, bit suffering. Who are Lishkas Parhedrin, bit suffering, on the right? Or, perhaps the other way around. Oy Lishkas Beis Avtinus Betzafin. The Kteris shop was on the right, Betzafin. Lishkas Parhedrin Bedurim. And the lodging quarters, Lishkas Parhedrin, was Bedurim on the left. We don't know which one was where. When Ms. Stavr says the Gemara, it's logical to assume, it just makes more sense as far as his scheduling, that the Lishkas Parhedrin Bedurim Havai. That his place of, of lodging, his sleeping quarters, was where? On the left side, Bedurim. Which was near the, um, the, uh, mikvah situated on the Shar Hamayim, which he used prior to entering the Beis Hamidish, as we just mentioned. All right, so it was a mikvah there, which he used the first, first thing in the day. And he had a Lishka right there, and we assume that's where he slept. It just makes it more convenient for him. And the Lishka on the other side, the far side, the south side, that's where he went to train for his Kteris. Why do you propose it to be as such? My time. It just makes more sense as far as his, his routine. Maktim Koy, he would get up. So if he lived in the Lishka's Farhedin, which was on the left, on Bedarim, he would get up in the morning. Umeisachas Raglov, solution of uh, using the facilities, uh, covering your legs as you sit. Vitavil. And then afterwards, he has to be toiled to allow entry to the Azar. Where was he toiled? Right there. In the mikvah on top of Sharamayim, which was right near his room, Bedarin, which was outside the Azar. So everything's fine. Vazal is suffering. And then he moves over all the way to the Lishkas of Zavtinas, which was on the other side with suffering. The governor of Chafina, and trains in for the scooping of the terrace. So that's the first thing he did. And then, He goes back to the Azara, engages in Avoidus Karbonus throughout the entire day. Towards evening. They do the Hazor Efer Par on him. Now, following Rabbi Kiva Shita, that if you do Hazor on a person who's tar, he becomes tummy. So we're concerned that perhaps the Kangal didn't need the Hazor. So he has to go be Teuvel. Where is he going to be Teuvel? Outside the Hazor. The Hazor, we assume the Hazor was also outside the Hazor. And then he went over to the Mikvah quickly, Bedarim. To the Shar Hamayim Mikvah, which is outside the Hazor. Bedarim, Vanayich. And he goes to his Lishka right nearby and he goes to sleep. So, he didn't really go much out of his way. He woke up Bedarim, was Teuvel. Went over to the base of Tinas on the other side to take care of the Kteris, engaged in Avoid, and went back home. Got his Hazor, got his Tfil, went back to sleep. So it's logical that Lishka's Parhedrin, his place of lodging, was Bedarim. And the base of Tinas room, the Kteris shop, was Bedzafan. Di Amis. Because if you propose that it was the other way around, 
Lish Kasparadin Betzafoin. That the place where he slept was Betzafoin on the right side. It's going to result in a very inconvenient and troublesome uh, schedule. Why? Because if he's sleeping on the right Betzafoin, Magdim Koi, he gets up in the morning. Umei Sechragul. He goes to the Beis Akis. Ve'ozladar, and before he could even enter the Beis Hamikdash, he has to go all the way around, around about route to the mikveh which was Bedarim. That was the Shar Hamayim mikveh outside the Azor. Ve'etzav, ve'gamer chafina. He walks over to the Kteris room right nearby, learns how to scoop the Kteris. Ve'oz the Beis Hamikdash goes into the Azor, avod avoid the kuliyan, engages in avoid that throughout the entire day. Leba lahadi panya. Now towards the evening, ma dole they do the hazor. Of course, he's back outside the hazor. Vahod azal darim betol and has to go back to darim to be table because he's tummy. He can't uh, do the tefil in the hazor. He has to go find that mikveh outside the hazor on the left side with darim. So he's leaving the hazor again. Uboi mahadur ubeis letzafin. And where is he sleeping? All on the other side, <laughs> on the right side with letzafin. Umei nachni rents there. He's going to go rest all the way but suffering. So basically, he went back and forth twice. To and fro and to and fro, which is unnecessary terch. Umitarach matrechina kulihai. We're going to trouble him, matrechim to this extent. It's unnecessary terch. And therefore, it's mistaver, it's logical that we can figure his, his rooms in a way that's most convenient and least burdening for the for the kind God. So again, he had two rooms, one with Safin, one with Darim. There were two mikvahs, one inside the Beis HaMikdash, on top of Beis HaParva, one outside the Azar, on the top of Lishkas, on the top of Shara Mai. So that's the Gemara. It makes sense that the Lishkas Farahedin, where he slept, was situated on the left side, but Darim, near that mikvah. On top of Sharamayim. So he gets up. He's titled. He enters the Azor, goes to his uh, terrorist shop, learns the terrorist, does the Avoida, and goes back home, gets the Azor, Taiva, and goes to sleep. Says the Gemara. The other way around would make it hard for him. Because he would wake up on the right, go all the way to the mikvah, be Taiva, learn the terrorist, go to the Avoida. And then he would get the Hazar, go back to the mikvah, be toivel again, and go all the way back to his room. That's unnecessary tirch. Allah malai. Why wouldn't we be matrichim? It's perfectly fine. Matrichim le The more tirch we do, we do the more, the better. The more, the better. Why? They eat stuki because, just in case that's stuki, and he has, um, he has intentions which are uh, less than pure. Live fresh, let him back out, to make it difficult for him. So we just said, okay, I don't need this anymore. So putting him through the grind would actually be a test of his um, true motive here. If he's a kosher, he's a rechayid, a man of integrity, he's doing a truly shem shemayim, who will stand all difficulties and, and, and pull through. But uh, by making it difficult for him, we're allowing for the tzutuki to say, I give up, I'm back out. Inami, another pshat is, even if he's a kosher, if he's a tzaddik, we want to um, calm him down a bit. We want to uh, give, him, give him a little trouble, a little, let, him, let him go through a little hardship. So he gets a little humble, he gets a dose of anova. And that's perfect preparation for the avoid on Yom Kippur. So perhaps, yeah, we did situate the rooms in a way that he has to walk back and forth, make it difficult for him. Because otherwise, if you don't agree with me, that there was a important purpose of being matriachim, why don't we just build both rooms next to each other? Why don't we have one on this side, one on the other side? Apparently there's a point in having him run back and forth. Inami, another pshat, another option, why wouldn't one room be enough for both purposes? He can sleep and train in the same room. Ah, apparently there's a purpose here. We're trying to achieve something here. Have him run back and forth, make life a bit difficult for him. Either to test his motive, or to make him a bit humble in preparation for the avoid of Yom Kippur. Take a look at Rashi here. On the wide line, Alam says Rashi, Kushi, Kalayim, Abichiloi, Toiv, Lechalat, Shrichoi. 
Isn't it good to be matrichim a bit? Matrichim le midas. We do it purposely. The itztukiu ve'ena yirei shemayim le kabel of terach amigdash. Lefish ma'akun evi that itztuk and not yirei shemayim who is willing to undergo some tercha to be zayich and the avoda. Let him back out. Great. Lefish ma'akun a gadol of like hablano mitchila v'tayvlano. Sharehein mishanas avoda because come on mishmaiten itztuk him are no good. They're going to mess things up, as we're going to see later on. So this is a good testing ground. He knows that uh, it's going to involve all kinds of ex- unnecessary exertion. Let him back out. Let us try to discourage him. There was a story that the Chassam Seifer, who was a Talmud of Rav Nassim Adler, so his Rebbe was once leaving town, and Rav Adler refused to allow the Chassam Seifer to accompany him. So he went on his wagon, and Chassam Seifer was walking alongside the wagon, and Rav Nassim Adler's uh, wagon picked up speed. Chassam Seifer started running, started running, and it got faster and faster, and he's running, and he's running. He's out of breath. He's about to collapse. At that second, Rav Nassim said, stop the wagon, let him on. And he explained that Shaloy Lishma, ulterior motives, contain a, carry a limit to them. <laughs> Up to a point. This way he could test them. He was able to discern that his his covenant was truly Shem Shemayim. He was at the point that was beyond Shiloh Yishma. If he had any other purpose, ah, just go along with the Rebbe, have a good time, then he would have stopped. He came to the point that the only thing that could be driving him is pure intentions, is Hashem Shemayim, come on, join me on the trip. So that's the Pshat here. We make it difficult for him to test him and test his covenant. Inam continues Rashi, I feel Adam Kasher, even if he's a man of integrity, he's not a stuki. I feel Adam Kasheru. Toiv lano la trichay. You want to put him through a bit of trouble? Kadei shalei tazuach. Kadei shalei tazuach. Data olav. Liz goyis because akuna. He thinks well, I'm a kind gadol man of the town. You want to calm him down a bit, and uh, that's the point of the tirch. Dilat emahachi doy bein la trichay because if that's not the point, we don't want to be matrichim. Then we have a simple solution. Oli avid. Shtelish kiyos about adadi. Why don't we make both rooms right next to each other, saving the trip? Apparently there's a point and purpose to it, and really, there's no way of knowing how much tercha we put him through. So we don't really have a conclusion. That was Shiloh. We know he had two rooms. One with Safan, one with Durham. One in which he slept, one in which he trained. One sure as to the exact location of one over the other. Continues the Gemara of Amr Ishka and Gadol. Getting back to the Mishnah. They committed him with a shvur, and they said, look, you're our shliach, you're a shliach of Bezin, mashbin anu alech. They committed him with a shvua, in Hashem's name, that you will not deviate from anything we've instructed you. You follow the orders to the T. This was to ensure that he's not a stuki. The fact that the Mishnah refers to him as a shliach, you're our shliach, shliach of Bezin, lema, they have it to yufta. Perhaps this is going to be a steer, a kasha, to Rav Huna, b'reder v'shu. To Om Rav Huna, b'reder v'shu, we have a shayla. Hani kahani. When can Yehanim do the avoida in Beis Hamidosh? They bring a curve. There's really two ways to look at it. When I'm a Yisrael and I bring an oil and a kind girl and the kind takes it as makrabi. Is he doing a service for me, for the Yisrael? Is he my shliach? Am I appointing him as an emissary to do a service for me? Or is he working on Hashem's behalf? He's Hashem's shliach. Now what difference does it make? So it's not just an academic engagement here. It's a big enough community regarding a case where the Kayin was Mudar Hano. Yisrael made a nether not to have enough from the Kayin. Now, if he's doing a service for the Yisrael, then I can't have this particular Kayin do Avayda from me. I'm benefiting from him. But if he's Shluchei Derachman, he's just serving Hashem, then there's no personal element here doesn't relate to me. He's doing a service for Hashem. I'm not benefiting from him. He's doing Hashem's job. So that was a shot. How do we view Kehanim? And he said, he concluded, Rav Huna has concluded, they consider Hashem Shlichim, and there's no concern by a nether of Mudrahana. How did he prove it? Because if you propose otherwise, that a kain is considered my shliach. How can you do that? Mi 
Do we ever find a precedent? Do we ever find a phenomenon, something that I can't do, but I can appoint a shliach to do it? Look, I'm a Yisrael, I can't bring a carbon. How can I appoint a shliach to do it on my behalf? I have no power to do that. Is there anything that Anan Loi Matzin Lumeabit that it will be something that I, that we can't do, Ushluche Didan Motsu Abdu, and our Shluchim can do it for us? Not empowered to designate a Shliach to perform a function that we ourselves can't do. A Shliach is an extension of the, of the Mishaleach. I can't do it. How can I point a Shliach to do it? That's a Funas Raya. Apparently a Kayan is doing Hashem's service. Okay. Avakash now Mishnah. They're referring to the Kayan Gadol. You're our shliach. You're shliach of Bezn. How do these two things work? Says the Gemara, although they refer to him as being their shliach, it was not a reference to the avoidim. It was simply a way to present their shvua. This is what they meant to tell him. We're committing you with a shvua. And it's going to be done al da'atenu. With our mindset in mind. With the Bezin's mindset in mind. What does this mean? Says Rashi on top. It wasn't a reference to the Avoida. Because as the Funa B'Yavishu tells us, a Kayin is a Shem Shlich. What then? Was within the context of the Shvu here. We're not following your heart. In Basel, a harem, because a shvur, suppose I'll try to twist it. Well, you said that, I really had that in mind. No, no, no. Oh, no, mashpin, oishchol, if you da attain of das bezin. It's exactly what we have in mind. That's what we're committing you when we say the shvur. You know, it's interesting. They made a shvur on his behalf. Generally, uh, in order to accept a shvur that somebody does on your behalf, you have to say, Amen. It's very Yisrael says, this coin would answer, Amen. This was considered an acceptance of the commitment of the shvur. This morning in the Kodesh of David Pamshli to show me in the Tziv and Sefer Bereshit's Perik Chavdal to Avram was Mashpi Aliezer to get a Shidduch for his son and the Tziv says a Chiddush that he doesn't have to say Amen because a master has the ability to be Meshamid his Eved with a Shvo even if the Eved doesn't respond with Amen and he brings a Rai he says our Gemara as well Bezn the, uh, was the supreme authority and they had the Koyach to be Mechayev to commit this Koyach with a Shvo even without him expressing any explicit consent. They made a shvua and that committed him. Interesting pshat in the Mishnah. The Mishnah continues. So they um, alluded to the fact that perhaps he's a tztuki. That to commit him, we must be you. That you won't deviate. You won't follow the tztukim's uh, formula as far as the k'tores. We learned that the tztukim would actually place the k'tores on the coals before entry to the Kodesh HaKadosh. It says... Uh, Aaron should not come and the pastor continues so it's took him took it literally the only way you can enter is with a cloud of of thirst differently you enter and then you have the onan formed by placing the thirst on the gachal so they had to make sure that he's going to follow the instructions nobody was there to control him he was on his own but perhaps he was an innocent fellow and we know that <laughs> To be chayshit, to suspect somebody who's innocent is uh, not a great thing, but out of necessity they had to do it. Who perishi boicha, he would turn around and begin crying. Vein perishin the boicha, and likewise they would turn around and uh, walk away crying. Why? Who perishi boicha, why was he crying? Shechashdut stuki, because they suspected him of being a stuki and he felt bad. I'm a stuki, he felt bad and he broke down. Vein perishin the boicha, likewise uh, they joined him. And they cried along. So although they had to, uh, they had to do this, but uh, with a krecht, with pain in their heart, and they expressed it by turning away and crying. Don't worry, my lady. If a person suspects an innocent person, he will be struck on his body. Rashi brings a raya. Moshe Rabbeinu said, Kali won't trust me, won't believe. And it turns out his hand became tzaraz. So it's a terrible thing to be chayish b'kshir. That's why they had to be baycha. They felt bad that they had to do this. Okay, so why do I have to do it? Shall he sacrifice b'chutz to ensure that he doesn't prepare the k'tores outside the kodesh hakadoshim v'yachnis and bring it in while it's already smoking k'derech shatztukin oisin just as tztukin would do. So this was a uh, necessary step out of necessity. 
a painful but necessary procedure. Turn around. Masa betztuki echa. There was a uh, story regarding King God who was at Stuki. She is kin bachutz. He prepared outside vehichnes and brought it in. Beitziyase on his way out of Beis Hamidrash. Oh, he was so happy. He was excited. He said, "Meach simcha gedolah." Paga by Av. His father meets him, and he um, gay. He got wind of what happened. Amar lo. He says to his son, "Look, bni." <laughs> yeah, we belong to the uh, Tztukin cult, and we espouse this uh, this shita regarding the terrorist, But when it comes to practice, uh, <laughs> we don't uh, we don't take any chances. We're afraid of the of the prushim of the of the chachamim, and um, in practice we don't do this. What are you getting so excited? Why why did you uh, why did you do it? <laughs> I once heard a story. Was by written by a, a Rav, who uh, served in Atlanta, Georgia, for many years. So he he writes that one day he was called over to the uh, deathbed of a, of, a, of a woman who, a woman who never joined his, his shul, an Orthodox shul, and he, she never joined. She was uh, part of the other uh, congregations, conservative reform, and she calls him to his, her bedside. So so he asks her. He says, you know, you lived all your life conservative reform. Suddenly you need the Orthodox rabbi. What's going on? She says, look, rabbi. Uh, this is uh, this is real. This is real serious. I'm about to leave this world. I'm not about to take any chances. <laughs> so, so we have a, a similar thing that Stuki says. Look, I know I taught you my whole life how to do it, but when it comes Lamaisa, you shouldn't take any chances. Amr Loi, his son responded, "No, I'm proud of what I did. Let's go all the way." Called Yomai, my whole life, how you see me style Amikra Zel. I was concerned about the fulfillment of this pasuk. Kibe Onan Eira Alaka Purse with a cloud of Kters. That's how you meant to enter. A Rala Kapurs means Hashem will reveal himself in the Kapurs with the Anan brought in by the Kohen God. He meant to come in with an Anan prepared. Amarati, I would say, Masai Yavai Yadi. Vakaimeno. When is the day going to come when I can finally fulfill this directive? Hachshav Shabbal Yadi. Now that the opportunity presented itself, Loya Kaimeno, I shouldn't fulfill it. Amru, they said, you know what happened? Not long after that, Ad Shemes, not many days passed until his fellow died, and he was lying in the trash, and there were worms crawling out of his nose. Rashi says, because when you enter the Kaddish HaKadoshim, the first thing is the person's nose. So that was me, the and he suffered through the, uh, through the nose. The Kaisi uh, Shalom says, what do you mean? Uh, he's holding a machta. A hand goes in first. The Yavitz, the Rakhav Emden says, generally a foot goes in first. So Kaisi Shalom says, actually a different shot. It was Midi connected Midi because he smelled with his nose the Rech of Kteris. Asks the Yavitz, the Rakhav Emden, what do you mean? Every, every kind of Gadol smells Kteris. But he's exempt because the Gmar Psachim speaks about the fact that he, is he Efshar, like a Machav, and there's no other way. He's doing a mitzvah and he's going to smell. So that's not considered an Isser. So why was he punished for smelling katars? Says the Yavitz, a guy in the Shachap, he says, over here, where did he do the katars? He prepared in advance, prematurely, in the Eichel. There's no mitzvah to do that. So generally, when a, when a king God prepares the katars inside, that's justified. If he happens to smell, it's just circumstantial. There's no accountability for that. But here, he prepared the katars unnecessarily in advance. By smelling the katars at that point, he's doing an Aver. And therefore, his Einish was Tayloin, Yaitzin, Mechaitman from his nose. Vyesh Aram himself had a different version of events. But he also on his way out, Nigaf, he was struck down. The Tanya of Chia, he was struck down by uh, a Malach. Came in Koyal. There was some sort of boom. Nishma Bazar heard in the Azar, Shabbalah Malach, Vachav Toyal Panov. A Malach came and struck him on his face. Nichna so Achav Akehanim and his fellow Kanam went in. Umatsu, they heard a big tumult. They came in to see what happened. Umatsu Kikaf Regal. Eagle bank safe up. Between his safaim, his uh, shoulders, they found the form of a, a calf regal eagle, uh, like the um, footprint of a regal eagle of a calf's foot, which was the form of a malach's foot. Shnemar, as we find it by malachim ragleim, regal shara, the legs of the malachim are straight down, of a calf ragleim, kikaf, regal eagle, the bottoms are reminiscent of the form of a regal eagle of calf's foot. On Rabbi Zechariah bin Kivutol, he says, look, throughout Yom Kippur, many times, Pamim Harbe, 
when we tried to keep the, the Kain Gadol up at night, I read for him from Daniel to keep him entranced and interested. Karis Lefan of Daniel. So now, Mishnah, we have it Kivuto with Heves. Masni Le Ravchanan Barav. Ravchanan Barav was the Rebbe of Rav's son. So Ravchanan Barav taught Lechia Barav, Chia the son of Rav, Kamei the Rav in the presence of Rav. He told him the Mishnah as follows. Omar Bishari ben Kifuto. So when he's saying over this halacha, he referred to him as Kifuto instead of Kivuto. The father was standing right there and he corrected him. Omar Fili Rav Yadim. Rav indicated his hands. A Kivuto. It's a, it's a vase. Don't say face, it's a vase. So he indicated that with his hands. The name of Why don't he just say it outright? Why do you have to show it with his hands? Krishma Vakari is over in Krishma. So he couldn't speak. So you merely indicate. Can a person hint and indicate during Krishma? When a person's middle Shema, he shouldn't hint with his eyes. Or indicate with his lips. Or show with his fingers. The same thing. And he winks with his eyes. Or hints with his lips. Or indicates with his fingers. During Shema. All of Akas of Oymer, the Pasuk on him says. Now, how does this Pasuk describe this fellow? I saw a beautiful shot from the, one of the Rishonim, Rabbeinu al Yakim. He says, Yaakov Avinu. When he, uh, when he came out to Mitzrayim and, um, Yosef came to greet him. We find that Yosef was not follow at Tzavar Aviv. He um, leaned over on his, on his father's neck and he kissed him. He hugged him. We don't find that Yaakov did that to Yosef. Rashi brings the Medrash because he was reading Shema at that point. The Mechtim Aliyor, as well as Desel, says a beautiful Pshat. He says at that point, the Ava, the love, was reached such a high, high level, such a high intense Madrega of Ava. He's seeing Yosef, 22 years. Yaakov Inu chose to take advantage of that moment and capitalize on it and divert it to Hashem. He never experienced such a high state of ecstasy of Ava. So he took that opportunity and transferred it to Ava's Hashem. He was reading Shema after the Shem al Of course, afterwards, he probably, I'm sure he hugged the Yosef, but at that moment, that high, he channeled to Hashem. Says Rabbi Nel Yaakov, this fellow, middle of Shema, he's winking, he's showing, he's indicating. You're not reading Krishna like Yaakov Avinu did. You're distracted. You're ah uh, ah. Uh, you're not. You're not into it. He meant to have kavana during Krishna. So how could Rav show his fingers during Shema? Like Kasha, the answer is depends where. During the first section of Shema, no interruption is allowed. In the second, then, although you can't speak, but you can indicate, and the Chavetz Chaim Shabur brings, if it's a, a tzorich of a mitzvah, like in this case, we have to correct the Rebbe, so that he um, imparts a proper version to his son. Tanur Abban, in Krishna we have the words of a dibarta bam, meant to express uh, those words. Bam, express the words of Torah. When it comes to davening, you have to express it out loud. Rather, as we learn from Chana, you meant to say Krishna, you meant to say Shemun Esra whispering. Another drasha, but the bar tabam, you meant to speak in those words of Torah, bam, yesh the chalu shusla dab. You're allowed to speak words of Torah, filoi bidvar machirim, as opposed to other, other words that Rashi says, it's referring to uh, frivolous conversation, idle chatter, sicha sayyiladim, kalas roish, things that have no purpose, no value. Rabbi Acha Eimer, but the bar tabam, speak bam, ase oisin kva, make Torah something of permanence, the, the highlight of your day. It's not just a matter of quantity, how much. Qualitatively, the hour, the two that you learn a day, that should be the, the focal point of your day. That should be the kva, something which is never which is never ignored and never sacrificed for anything. That's the kva. Baltas and Marai, don't make them just uh, haphazard and transitory. Omarava, ha-soch si chaschul no'ir person engaged in Sichas Chulun, presume this is what Rashi meant, Sichas Ha'iladim, frivolous, idle chatter, he's over at Mrs. Hasei Shinemar, Vedibarta Bum, speak words of Torah, Bum, speak Torah, V'loi Udvar Macher, as opposed to other things. Rav Achabar Yaakov Oymar, Oyver Balam, he's also Oyver, Alois Hasei, 
there's a pasuk in Dibur Kabbalah and in Kayelis Shenamar called Advar Me Game. All these unnecessary chatter. Lo Yuchal Ishadaber. A person not meant to speak. Now Rabbi Shaffai Feinstein the Chuv explains that uh, based on Rashi that it was speaking about speaking idle chatter, unnecessary things. Meaning, he speaks about Chavis Talmud Torah. He says, yeah, there's a, a minimum of how much a person is meant to learn a day. Uh, the Gemara in the Dharam says, at a minimum, Krishna in the morning at night, we know that a higher level than that is being kaveh itim twice a day, etc., etc. Every person chooses his level of Talmud Torah and sky's the limit. We have a minimum, but there's no end uh, upward. It says Ramayisha, when the Gemara says, when a person is speaking words other than Torah is over, essay, lays essay, the Gemara means things that have no value. Meaningless chatter, meaningless talk. Of course, if he's engaged in things that have meaning, that have purpose, um, he's engaged in business, even relaxation, etc., things that have value, things that have purpose. That's not what the Gemara means. And Ben Hashem uh, elaborated on this in the um, in the uh, clip of the Haaris after the Shir. Ramesh has a discussion about it there. Uh, a lot of angles and aspects to it, but this is a nutshell what he's saying that the Isra here is getting engaged and involved in unnecessary, valueless conversation, a person should keep away from that. Continues the Mishnah. B'kesh li'isname. Can Godel was meant to stay up throughout the night of Yom Kippur to prevent any possible Tumas carry. Now they notice that he's about to drowse off. Pirche Guna, the youngsters of the Kihana, mocking Lafana, Bezrat Streda, they would snap before him loudly with their finger. Vayimur la'ish can Godel, our master can Godel. Amoy, get up! For Hufik, and relieve yourself of your drowsiness, achas, by performing some sort of acrobatic feat, a la ritzpah, on the floor. This will keep him up. Umahasikin oisin, they kept him busy, ach, yegez, man shkita, until the morning arrived and it was time for the shkita satom. Misha says, they snapped the etzba tsureda. What is that? My tsureda. Amaravyuda tsarasa the dot. Tsureda is a combined word. word. Tsara, tsara is like uh, two wives. Sarasa the da. It's referring to the finger which is situated next to da, next to this one. Mai, what's da? Gudel. The thumb. So we're speaking, quite the Rashi's chat, snapping the finger next to the thumb, like this. Machvi Ravuna. Ravuna demonstrated this type of snap, and it made such a loud boom, the ozal kolan, the noise sound, swept through Bekule Birav throughout the entire Yeshiva. So according to Rashi, mark in the front of Esra, Shreda means the finger next to the thumb. Kind of difficult to do it. The uh, Tayshid Shan looks differently. He says it's the second finger. And the reason why it's called Esra Shreda, Tzorada Da, because it works well with the thumb. They're both uh, pretty much um, the same size. They work together. And that's what the Mishnah means. They would snap that finger, which created a loud boom, kept the Kohen Gadol up. Va'emr la'ish Kohen Gadol. Ha'fig achas al ritzvah, show off some... Uh, Impressive acrobatic feat for us. Oh, Rabbi Yitzchak, al Khadas. Do something new, something unique. Mai, what is this referring to? Amrile, they said, Achvi Kida. Amrile, Achvi Kida, tell him, show uh, this Kida maneuver. And Rashi explains, it was a very difficult maneuver to do. He would actually stand upright and then bend down until he reaches the floor and his thumbs came into contact with the floor below. So he was bent over and at this point, he was simply supporting himself just by his thumbs. And then you have to rise from that position without any outside support. A difficult maneuver. In fact, the Gemara and elsewhere says that Levi tried this and he um, he pulled something. He got uh, he um, he was injured. So this is some type of uh, impressive feat, which they asked the Kohen Gadol to perform to keep him up. to keep up until the morning. Tana. They wouldn't keep him up using instruments, which theoretically can be used in the Beis HaMikdash, because only the Rabbana and Ishvah HaMikdash, but they wouldn't do that. El Bepeh, they would sing to him, Bepeh, what would they say, what shir would they say, they would sing from Tehillim, Im Hashem lo yivna bayis, Shav omlu bayinav boy, says Rashi, six lines from the bottom, El Bepeh, Hayyum Yishayim lefana, they would sing verbally, Im Hashem lo yivna bayis, Kulayimah, if Hashem is not going to wash this home, shove 
Omlu Bain of Bai, its workers, its construction workers, who have toiled for futility, for nothing. We need Hashem in the picture. Kalaimar, this was the message. He You're going to be the man of the house tomorrow. Be careful, stay humble. Keep your intentions pure and focused. L'shem Shemayim. Shtele Ruotzen. That is accepted by Hashem. We need that Tziyat HaDashmayim. Shem Eino Ritzuya because if it's not favored by Hashem, it's worthless. It's futility. Ein Terchacha Oyle Leklum. So that was the message, the Musar, they gave him that night. Continues the Gemara. Mi Yekiru Yushalayim from the Chasha, uh, people in Yushalayim. Lo Yoh Yushenim Ka Alayla. They would come keep in company to stay up all night. They would learn in front of Kain Gadol Kadeshi Yishma Kain Gadol Kala Avara. So that he would listen to their singing, their, their, uh, the sound of their learning, and he wouldn't be overcome by sleep. Tanya, Abashol Oimer, Af Bigvulin, Hayu Oisin Kain, Zechel Amidish. Even after the Churban, they try continuing this practice, staying up all night, Zechel to the Migdash. So even outside the Migdash, Bigvul, and the other cities, they started this type of custom, but then they discontinued. Because they saw that it would bring to sin, they would mingle men and women and bring to inappropriate behavior. Can you imagine on Yom Kippur? Omar Abayi, the Tame of Nachmar Yitzchak, Tirugumot, this is interpreted to mean, to refer to things that happened in our door. As we're going to see soon. The Omar Le Elio, Elio Navi told, he turned to the Rav Yehuda Achva, the brother of the Rav Salah Hasid. You know, Amrisu, you all say, you all wonder, Am I Le Yosem Mashiach? Why doesn't Mashiach come? I'll tell you why. For Idna, right now, what is it? Yom Kippur. You know what happened? The evil Kama Besota. Several Besulites girls were never, they were, um, they were involved in Chait, bin Nahardah, in the town of Nahardah, on Yom Kippur at night. Do you imagine? So this was the reason why they discontinued this type of custom because they would stay up all night and inevitably would lead to inappropriate behavior, even on Yom Kippur. Now, having heard this, Rabbi Yudah responded to Leo and Avi, Amr Lehi, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, my Amr. What does HaKadosh Baruch Hu say about this type of thing? Amr Lehi, Hashem, he said to him like this, Hashem always find the good side in Kali Yisrael. Even this type of behavior on Yom Kippur, he has a good word about it. La Fesach Chatas Ravens. The Pasuk says that the Yitzhahara is right there, right at the Pesach, right at the door, ready to jump on you. And this is a limit tzchus, even uh, when it comes to this type of extreme inappropriate behavior on Yom Kippur. So if Yehuda asked El Yonavi further, what is the Satan? The prosecutor is always trying to paint Kalish on a negative light. What does he say? How does he present the case to the detriment of Kalish Ron? Oh, Malaysia, El Yonavi tells him, I'll tell you a secret. The Satan today is unemployed. Although Yitzhar is there, pretty strong, but the Satan, meaning the the Satan element, the Satan aspect of his job, he's the same fellow, but the Satan aspect, where he's empowered uh, to go ahead and present uh, the cases before Hashem in a way which exasperates the, the, the guilt of Kal Yisrael, that he cannot do on Yom Kippur. Satan b'yom et Kippuri, on Yom Kippur, lesley reshusa, he has no permission or power, lestuni, to prosecute. Mimai, how do we know this? Oma Rabbi Bechama, the word Hasatan, Numerically, the gematria is how much? Tlas, meya, vishit, and Equals 364. What does this indicate? That one day a year, he's off. Tlas, meya, vishit, and 364 days of a year. Is so he has permission, he has power. Le'istuni, to prosecute Kalei to paint him in a bad light. But yoyimi, the Kippuri, however, on Yom Kippur, Leslei, Rishus, Le'istuni, he has no Rishus. To prosecute and to present Kal Yisrael in negative light. So we're left with Hashem's Limitzchus, the Pesach, Chatos Revis, which was a Limitzchus, even for this type of inappropriate behavior. Okay, let's do a quick Chazar of today's da. We learned that the Kohen had two rooms, one in which he slept, one in which he trained. We're not sure which room was Betzafen, which room was the Dharm. We learned about the two mikvahs, one inside the Azara, one outside the Azara. We learned that the Kohenim, with the shlichem of Hashem. We learned about the tztukim, who would prepare the terrorists in advance inappropriately, and we learned about the story that tztukim was so proud of what he did, and his unfortunate end. We learned about the requirement of kavana by Krishna. We learned of uh, how they would keep the kohen up, and all types of uh, 
all types of ploys and tricks they would do to keep him up. And we concluded that the Anim Kippur, the, the, the Satan, has no, has no Rishus to be mastered in Al-Khalisro. Much Hatzlacha to you, and be well.